Hello folks, Jason Christman here at JC's Bees. Today I want to discuss dry pollen feeders. Um, some very simple methods to putting one together. Uh, most of the stuff um, a lot of you are going to have around the house. Um, dry pollen comes in a bucket somewhat like this. This is the Ultra Bee dry pollen that I feed that you're going to see used in this video. Now, you know, it's early spring and um, this is about the time that everybody starts to think you know I made it through winter it's time to start boosting brood production I'm going to throw some dry pollen inside the hive and start boosting that or some pollen patties I'd like to throw in a little note here something maybe you can keep in your back pocket um, my rule of thumb is if the bees are flying and they're able to go out and get pollen from the early pollen sources here in central Ohio that's the maple tree then sure go ahead and set up a dry pollen feeder away from the hive I wouldn't suggest early spring that you start feeding pollen inside the hive you see what happens is this pollen is protein and bees use protein to raise brood so if you start feeding lots of pollen inside the hive um, they're going to start raising out frames of brood that's going to push the cluster further apart and when it gets cold the bees aren't going to leave that brood that's their job to stay there and keep that brood warm so it gets cold your bees are going to freeze they're going to die you need the bees to be able to come back together cluster around a small batch of brood and keep warm so for that reason i do not suggest that you feed pollen dry or a pollen patty inside the hive too early in the spring. Maybe wait until you get closer to the chances of frost being gone. Um, here that's about May 15th so I imagine by the end of April I'll be feeding pollen inside the hive. So you know I'm a few weeks away from my frost line or from frost stopping and uh, and that's how I'll do things. I won't push it too hard and throw this inside the hive and risk killing my bees. I'll stick to the outdoor feeders. So let's break down some of these outdoor feeders and how they can be made. Um, I made a post on my Facebook page, JC's Bees, and if you're not following it, I invite you to come check it out. We have some great conversation there. But I, I mentioned that I needed some pictures of some dry pollen feeders to share in a video. And I had some great ones shared with me. And I want to share those with you now. So that maybe if you're looking for a way to throw together a pollen feeder, a dry pollen feeder, maybe this video will help you out. So let's start off here with a simple bucket. You can see they took a bucket, they laid it on its side, and they put this dry pollen on the inside of the bucket. This is a great choice. This is a great option. One thing you want to watch for with something like this is rain though. Because once the pollen gets wet and turns to a muddy pollen, Bees don't seem to want it. It doesn't seem to dry out back into powder either. It dries out into one big chip or chunk. The next one I want to share with you is a tote feeder. Just a basic storage tote. They laid it on its side. They put the dry pollen sub on the inside of it. Another great option. But another thing to look out for here is rain. So um, when this was shared on my Facebook page, um, another friend or a person that likes my page mentioned that maybe put the lid back on the tote, stand it back up, and just under the rim of the lid on the tote, drill some holes for bees to enter. Then you're able to keep the lid on, keep the rain out, and the bees can still access the pollen on the inside. I thought that was a great idea, so I wanted to bring that to your attention. The next one is uh, stuff that a lot of us have if you're uh, planning to grow your apiary very much you probably have bee equipment sitting around so you can see they took a solid bottom board they took an outer lid they threw the pollen uh, sub and on the solid bottom and then they put the lid on it keeps the rain out the bees can get in and out that works great awesome idea now the next two are going to cost you if you want to try one of these. 
Uh, the PVC feeder, that's something a lot of beekeepers are using now. But it costs a little bit to build. One of the major expenses is the 10 foot piece of 4 inch PVC. That's going to cost you about $11 and the sad part is, is you only need 10 inches. A gutter adapter is going to be about $2.50 and the cap that goes on the other end is about $1.95. So what I recommend if you're going to do this route and you have beekeeping friends is you buy several of the gutter adapters, several of the end caps, and you make a few of these. Use that whole section of pipe up and then sell it to your friend beekeepers and get yours for free. What do you think of that? Hmm? Everybody's happy. The last one I'm going to share with you is something I put together back in February. We had some warm weather, so I wanted to introduce a little bit of dry pollen, but I didn't want to stick it in the hive like I mentioned earlier. So I set up this Saracel top feeder with an outer lid. Check this out. It's February 19th at 59 degrees. It's going to be warm for the next week or so. So today I decided to try feeding some dry pollen sub. Um, what I've got here is a little contraption I threw together. I took a Saracel top feeder and put dry pollen sub in it and then I used an 8 frame lid which doesn't actually straddle the feeder, it sits on top. So there's entrances up here on each end that the bees are able to get up in. Now if we look closely here, you're going to notice that their legs are loaded on some of them. They are collecting pollen. Now I'm going to open this up real quick and show you what the inside looks like. Okay, so you can see here, you can see the dry pollen sub. You can see the bees completely covered. One thing I'd like to mention is that this dry pollen sub in this bucket and in a smaller container is listed in my Amazon bee store. Um, you can find that down in the description of the video. Um, you'll also find the Saracel top feeder if you're interested in that. The advantages to the Saracel top feeder is, I just showed you it works for pollen, dry pollen. It works for dry sugar during the winter and it works for syrup during the summer season. So you can kind of use it year round. But I wanted to bring up my uh, beekeeping store and I invite all of you to check it out and uh, let me know your thoughts. I'd also like to show you what this dry pollen looks like just in case you're curious. Kind of give you an idea. It doesn't have much of a smell. It doesn't make me sneeze. It doesn't make my eyes itch in case you're wondering. Um, but at the same time, I don't have any allergies. So maybe if you uh, if you do have allergies, maybe it will bother you. But for me personally, it does not bother me. So thanks for watching, folks, and I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you like the video, throw me a thumbs up. That will help boost it for other beekeepers and make it easier for them to find. If you haven't taken time to subscribe, please do so. And click on that little bell next to the subscribe to make sure you're getting notified whenever I release a video. And thanks for watching, folks.